Yo, what's up, YouTube? So Namco invited your boy out to San Diego a couple weeks ago to preview the Heihachi patch that's about to drop in about a week, I think it is. And I'm basically here to give you my thoughts on everything it consists of because I got to play it. Now, as we make our way to the meeting room where this all took place, I do want to preface this video by letting you know that I was a little strict in there. For instance, even though we got to play the entirety of the story mode expansion, we were only really allowed to record versus battle and like the main menu and customization, I think. What I wanted to do while I was there, I wanted to record the bot do Heihachi's move list, right? So when I get home, I can go over it with you guys. I asked Michael Murray, he said, let me confirm for you. And he went and asked and he came back. He's like, I'm sorry, man. They said versus battle only. And that's fine. No, no big deal. So to my surprise yesterday, after the trailer drops and after the Tekken talk, there's Korean YouTubers who are uploading the whole move list. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, there's people who are uploading the freaking uh, story mode. That's not really fair, <laughs> but it's cool. Namco still noticed me and invited me out to try this out early. So, I mean, I was still happy to uh, check it out. And speaking of checking shit out, take a look at how they decorated this meeting room for us. It was so cool, dude. You got the refreshments here to the side, up ahead. That's where we all got to play. And I didn't know a goddamn soul here. It was me, a bunch of journalists, and Lily Pichu. She's the only person I knew there. So I just like hung out with her during the event and like coached her through the story mode because she didn't know how to use the DLC characters. But it was fun. And yeah, let's get into the story mode here. It took approximately, I believe, two hours for me to complete. I won't spoil anything, obviously, but yeah, you get to play as Eddie, Lydia, and Heihachi. I thought the Heihachi parts were pretty cool and entertaining. The Eddie and Lydia segments were not as fire, but they were still okay. They weren't like bad or anything. Maybe Eddie's was the weakest. Lydia had some like cameos and there were some cool cutscenes. But I mean, it is free and this is a way for people to try out the characters to see if they want to buy them. So I guess that's something. I would say more, but again, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'll just leave it at that. Now, I do have a theory here. Because there's one character still left, yet the story mode expansion has already released and it features these three, that makes me think that is the fourth character going to be perhaps a guest character? A non-canon character? Because think about it, who's going to be able to top Heihachi? It's not a kangaroo. It's not a Vale Tudo fighter. So I'm just theorizing here. I don't know anything, but it definitely makes me wonder. Okay, so before we get into the gameplay versus a bunch of bots, let's take a moment to admire how beautiful this stage is while I give you guys a few disclaimers. I was given no resource regarding Heihachi in Tekken 8. I was basically given this setup and it's like, here you go, enjoy the character, man. There was no trailer, it just came out like a couple days ago, I think. There, there was nothing. So I spent this 90 minutes I had just figuring the character out. I didn't even know he had stances until I freaking did it. And I'm like, this seems like it's really important. And a lot of his notations are different. So don't expect like a bunch of cool setups or anything like that. This is basically going to be me figuring the character out in real time and I'll do voiceover and I'll give you guys like insight on what it is I'm going for or I'm trying, things like that. Also, this stage is absolutely beautiful. I love everything about it. There are no gimmicks. This is like our final destination and no, this is not the music from this stage. I had an error with my audio when I brought this stuff back home. The SD card that they gave me had bugged audio, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Shit happens. What are you going to do? So what do you think about that intro? I thought it was pretty cool with the headbutt and everything. Now the translation might not be one to one. I have watched videos where people correct the translations you see. And right there, that's the BNB I figured out on the fly with the forward three after the double electrics. And I mean, his damage is still pretty on par with, I guess, most of the cast. If you saw how much damage that initial combo did. And peep his hair, it stands up when he's in heat too. Isn't that? Look at that. 
that's a cool little addition. This is his heat, his heat smash is going to be able to break the floor on stages that allow it. And also, that's I believe that's his generic low. I, at first, I thought it was down back four, but I think because he stayed crouching, I think it was just a down four. New one one two animation. Yeah. Also, after the I they got rid of his back forward two that elbow. I couldn't do it after the um, the hell sweep into tsunami kicks. They got um uh, he's missing a bunch of moves from before like his back four for instance his homing move his back one two his down back one plus two his get out of jail uh crouch jab string it is no longer in the game and, and look at that iron palm after that and also omen did you see the new animation on that it's so cool and I think it's optimal after wasting one right here I try to see if I can launch with omen and you can't it is not possible. You can do it in a combo, however. Um, I think I try the combo here. This is what Nakatsu-san told me to try, and I just could not get it to work. I don't know if there's another route. I don't know if there's like a translation error, but Electric Omen into forward three, I was having a really tough time trying to get that to work. That's his classic Tekken 6 BNB. Of course, there's no bound anymore. Right there, I'm trying to see what his taunt looks like. The sparks. I, do I try it again? Yeah, I just wanted to see the electricity, how it looks updated, it's nice, I like it. Combo time, we got the wall carry, yeah, the peep the damage, oh, I messed up the wall carry right there. And yeah, he has his old rage drive as a string now. I don't know if it's I-10 counter hit guaranteed, probably not, right? That would be a little insane, but he does have the string, it's not heat only either, you can do it outside of heat as well. And that's his key charge, that's pretty cool, it's like unique. I'm glad he doesn't have like a generic one, it's like more unique. I am a fan of that. Reina transition, that was cool. Um, Right here, I wanted to see what his unique intro was with her. If you read it, it like hints at another story expansion or even like <laughs> Tekken 9 maybe, who knows at this point. And it's, it's also a unique outro right here with the quote. And shout out to the guy who did the Tekken 7 cameo for Hayes ending. His outro, his victory thing, that, that was cold. Right there, that's his uh, down back 1-4 now. You can tornado with that. That's very reminiscent of his uh, old forward 2-3. And uh, his universal parry here where he took damage before. It's now a Sabaki. I could not get the bot to hit me right there. And Peep Reina's expression. I wonder what other characters are going to look like when Heihachi is uh, heat smashing them. Check out that down back too. Face on the floor. That's a new <laughs> animation. And uh, yeah, his hunting hawk super tail spins now too. Over here, I wanted to see if Lee and Heihachi had a unique intro together, but um, as you can see, they do not. He probably doesn't even remember he has an adopted son. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. A lot of Twitter stuff that I've seen about Heihachi being broken is all in regards, well, like 80% of it is in regards to the stuff he can do when he activates his install. Now during this time I had no idea what that did, but I do know what it does now. You can only activate it at the earliest in round 3 and you can only do it one time. And of course that does make it so he has like a safe hell sweep <laughs> and so he can launch you after forward 1 plus 2 and a bunch of other things. I did not know much about that mechanic going into this. So I just wanted to point that out. Wait, why am I pulling up the move list? They're about to fucking flag me for this shit. I will go to Namco jail. Please turn this off. Unless I was Korean. Unless I was a Korean creator, then I could apparently do anything I wanted. I could have probably... They probably played online ranked with this character, man. That shit was crazy. But anyways, this is me just discovering his stance moves. These are, of course, better done out of, like, moves, like forward three or something. But I'm just seeing everything he can do out of it. That stomp, I've seen people do a bunch of cool things with that stomp. I, and I think you can also do like an unbreakable grab out of it or something like that. But yes, there are various ways you can transition into that stance. Instead of just doing it raw. Akuma and Heihachi, they 
didn't have a unique intro they just had like unique quotes which was a little disappointing but it is what it is i mean the quote was cute at least and that is one way you can transition into this into the stance and look that's his old down forward one two now you can't do it like down forward one two anymore you have to do it out of a stance now i don't know how useful it will be um but it's still in the game and look, you don't have to electric after Hunting Hog. You could just do forward three if you want to do easy combos. So, I mean, he, there's something for everyone. And that's his old back four. Well, his new back four. The input is back four. It's not a homing kick anymore. <laughs> so that's what I was saying earlier. They got rid of his back four homing kick and his back one homing move. So that's probably his weakness. Susceptible to sidestep. I even asked Nakatsu-san what Heihachi's weakness is. And I quote... He told me Heihachi will be weak to sidestep. That's what he said. So if this character comes out and he's insane with tracking people, then I guess we will go from there. But that's what the game director told me. So do with that information what you will. Over here, you're going to see me do Heihachi's up forward 2-1. That is his old sidestep 2-1. It has a new notation. In my opinion, this is going to be a very important move for Heihachi players to heat dash out of because it is a mid mid. And right there, that was his that's his new side step too that I was spamming right before I started right before I key charged. You can transition into the uh, stance after side step too if I'm not mistaken. Here I'm trying to hit the unblockable. I don't get it. So I rage yard instead. This is top 3 rage yard in my opinion. Just the uh, domain expansion here. With the Jojo walk also, like Heihachi doesn't do much, but just the environment, I love it so much. I'm a huge fan of this Rage Art. Top three, in my opinion. He also did not have a unique intro with Jun. I tried to see if he did, and this is the new ender off of the double hell sweep. But you saw how I missed the, uh, the wall combo. I think sometimes you have to be a little careful if you decide to do it. Here... If I didn't dash up, I would have hit the wall combo. So that will just take a little getting used to. That's Heihachi's Weivu. I'm not sure if it makes sound effects. I guess we will find out in about a week. But I mean, it's just as fast as any other Mishima Wave dash. And right here, this is his other stance. I, again, don't know much about it. But from to me, it seems like he does a lot of heavy, heavy moves out of this. More so than um, poking mix-ups like he did with the stomp regarding the other stance. So I don't know much about it, but I know you can charge him up by holding that stance. <clears throat> now, do I think Heihachi is like broken or anything like that? Um, it's obviously way too early for me to say. I will I will say that when he activates his install, the once per match, I'm gonna say yeah, <laughs> because he has like a, a 12 frame launcher, he can hell sweep safely. I I mean that's insane, right? But again, that's only a one time thing per game. I don't know if he's OP or anything like that. He's very fun. Like his combo routes are very fun to do. But I don't know how 50-50 heavy he will be from his stances. If we're going by Tekken Nate's history, then yeah, he will be quite heavy with the 50-50s. But then again, Ishimas have always been 50-50 bastards. So would it even be anything new if Heihachi plays like that? I don't know. Your opinion may differ from mine, but... Yeah, he's a lot of fun. I will start the G.O.D. or bust video for Heihachi right when he drops. So make sure to come check that out. And to finish this video off, I'm going to show you guys Heihachi in customization mode. So you have like a sneak preview of what he looks like with things equipped. You're going to want to see how he looks in his Tekken 4 Fundoshi. I thought it was I thought it, it turned out great. And also I'm going to show you guys my favorite characters on the main menu screen. I really liked, you know, King, and surprisingly, Nina was probably my favorite. And I'll also show you Reyna and stuff like that. But yeah, if you enjoyed this type of video, subscribe. It shows people like Namco that folks are watching, and then they'll invite me to stuff. Anyways, thanks guys, and I'll leave you with the rest of the content. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching.